Let's look at Thursday in the NBA. Who we stream in, who's in, who's out. Could be a long list. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and Jamara Hugo Hagen is staying. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble, on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Fangel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $250 bucks if your bet wins. Visit fangil.com slash locked on to get started. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We're free. We're available on all platforms. Double bang it. Go and hit the thumb up. Go and uh, subscribe. Leave your comments. Ring the bell down below. Every time that I record shows, they post, there's always something that goes on in between. I'm sure there'll be some of me doing this as well. Did the Wave Wire show earlier today. Talked about how I thought Isaiah Shoot would be out for a long period of time. He is he's out for the year. Asar Thompson is also out for the season. I don't know what the hell they're going to do. Simone Fonteca gets a boost, but he's also out. I think Stanley Amude is going to start, but they also recently signed Chemezi Metu. Uh, is he, I, I don't, are they going to start Wiseman, Metu? Are they going to bring Tosan Evbuamwan in there as well? I think it's going to be extraordinary. Fonteca is the guy. Amude might be streamable. Metu might be streamable. I think it's going to be incredibly messy. Incredibly messy. Speaking of Messi, Emmanuel quickly now has no timetable to return either in Toronto for personal reasons. Are we finally going to get JFL? Is he going to get big minutes after I talked about him a few weeks ago? Bruce Brown's going to get a boost. How long does he last? What about old mate Prestige Penis? There's a lot going on. These aren't even the things that are going to happen on Thursday. So we'll talk about Thursday. We'll talk more about that stuff later in the day on the recap show. But let's have a look at Thursday's action um, and what we need to look at In terms of games, the Pelicans are the first game up. They do take on your Orlando Magic. Uh The Pelicans have the best schedule in the entire NBA. You'll notice a little difference at the top of the screen if you're watching here on YouTube. The it might maybe need to do with something better to make it look nicer. But the letters or the the days of the week that are capitalized for next week are quality game days. We haven't had this problem for three weeks. Every day has been stramble. The next three weeks, absolutely not. It's disaster zone. The Pelicans are sitting pretty. They play Thursday, Friday, Sunday this week, so they've got three games in four nights to end the week. And then next week, they play on all of the low-volume days, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Huge, huge W. The Magic go Thursday, Saturday this week, and then they play Wednesday, Friday, Saturday the week after. So one quality game next week. So you're seven days, eight days in between quality games for the Magic. At the moment, the only guy on the injury report there is Dyson Daniels, the dustbuster. He's out. Uh, Jonas Valanciunas, we need to watch him. Now, again, easily a droppable player. But with six quality games coming up in the next period of time here, and literally nobody else is near that, that sort of keeps him relevant, I guess. Franz, like he, he goes from a guy that was, is a, was a must-roster player to being like an elite stream guy. So if he's on your roster, that transition doesn't change a huge amount in your brain. But it, well, it doesn't change a huge amount in what you do, but it, it moves away from that situation where, um, like if Valentunas was just widely on the wire, you'd grab him because it's a great schedule here. But as a guy that you'd consider a must roster, he's dreadful. But in the the end result of that is like, yeah, probably just keep him because of how the schedule breaks. It's really tough. Um, I want to watch Franz Wagner as well because he has stunk for like two months. I know a lot of people are, are willing to drop him. And honestly... Honestly, again, with the way the schedule breaks next week, with him after Saturday not playing another quality game until... Now, he would be startable most nights, you'd think, on the Wednesday or Friday. But with how he's playing, maybe he's not. I won't drop him, but... Man, it gets it gets a close call. So who's getting boosted? Larry Nance. Well, that's unbelievable schedule here for Nance. We hope he plays the back-to-backs, but what if he plays 25 a night? Six quality games, next 10 nights. That's huge. And then Jalen Suggs is playing really well. He would be startable on the on the high volume days, I think, with how he's going at the moment. And yeah, like I love what love what we're seeing from Suggsy at this point. Second game, you'll notice a million injuries on this list. 
It's the Sacramento Kings, the Washington Wizards. The Kings do have the back-to-back. They play Wednesday coming into Thursday. Then they go again Saturday. And then next week, they've got four games. They've got the quality game early in the week, which is Tuesday. They go Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Sunday. So fringe Kings guys, maybe a Keon Ellis. After Tuesday, you can drop them. Wizards go Thursday, Saturday this week. That's great. And then next week, while there's a lot of opportunities opening up with Washington, they've got four games next week, all high-volume days. Now, the difficulty there is we can say, well, okay, well, I don't want Rashawn Holmes or Justin Champagne or the sandwich, Patrick Baldwin Jr. or Corey Kispert or uh, Jared Butler or whoever because they're not going to be usable on high-volume days. But if everybody else is out for Washington, then maybe you would actually use them on those days. It's it's hard to plan this far ahead with these bad teams. So Kevin Herter will be out. Trey Lyles will be out. Sasha Vizenkov will be out. Oh, actually, that's not true. So Vizenkov is out Wednesday. He might be out Thursday. I don't know. But for the Wizards, we got some updates. Good. Tyus Jones is out. Marvin Bagley is out. Denny Avdia is officially questionable, while Kyle Kuzma is officially off the injury report. But I am doubtful of that because that exact same thing happened last game. Then they put Kuzma back on three hours later, and then they ruled him out. So at the moment, I'm just going to put Kuzma there as a questionable tag. Maybe. I don't know. Rashawn Holmes is also questionable with an illness, while Landry Shamet is out and Eugene Amari is out. So Justin Champagne with no... Um, with Jones out, with Bagley out, with maybe Abdir out, with maybe Kuzma out, Champagne's got value there. Um, so we want to watch how they use him because they didn't start him. They started old mate John Davis for whatever reason. So let's see what happens here with Champagne. Keon Ellis getting the big boost there in Sacramento as a starter with Kevin Herter out. So we do like that value. And then Jared Butler with Tyus Jones out. Yes, Jordan Poole will start at, at point guard. But ba- Butler played 30 minutes last game. There might be an interesting stream boost for him. And again, if Tyus remains out, would Jared Butler be usable on all of these higher volume days? Mm. It does become a close call. The next game is the Brooklyn Nets and the Milwaukee Bucks. I did this before we got the, the Nets chucking a few extra guys in the injury reports. I'll talk about that in a sec. The Nets play Thursday, Saturday. Then they have the four high volume days next week. So that's bad. Whereas the Bucks go Thursday, Sunday. Plus they got the Wednesday this week. So Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. And then next week, they, like the Pelicans, are all qualities. Three quality games. Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. I Chris Middleton is playing on Wednesday, so I don't think he plays on Thursday. Giannis is out on Wednesday. So I'm not sure about him on Thursday. I, I'm not I don't think this is just rest given by the fact that he missed the last game as well. So I would say Giannis is at least questionable for Thursday. The Nets have now also ruled out Dorian Finney Smith. And then last game, we were like, why, why did Nick Claxton play so few minutes? And Dayron Sharp played a lot. Well, apparently Claxton's sick. He's on the injury report as questionable. So I already had Dayron Sharp on my radar. I thought, what are they doing here? Are they splitting minutes? Is Sharp going to get more of it? Well, yeah, look, we pay attention to this. Because if, if Claxton misses, or if they decide that he's got some sort of long-term issue, again, if they're tanking, he's an unrestricted free agent, who knows? Sharp would be startable in every one of these games. I, I just don't know that, though. Who gets boosted? Cam Thomas is getting boosted because Mikhail Bridges sucks at the moment. And Thomas is getting a lot of opportunities. We just want to see him continue to build on that. And then Leaky Beasley, great chance for Leak with the, the schedule working in his favor with Giannis and Middleton in and out of the lineup. Leaky's got this nice little run going where he's been unrosterable at times. He's been a great rosterable guy at other times. And now it looks like it's uh, everything's coming up leaky at this stage. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little bit further? Do you ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Well, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. It's got class-exclusive Google built-in as your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. You've got Google Assistant, Google Play Store, uh, and Google Maps built into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. And the 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Armada. It will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to 8 in first-class luxury or style. It's got, you can tow bigger, you can explore further in the 2024 Nissan Armada. So take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada, and go and find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. 
Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook because now new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That is $200 to use on point spreads, money lines, and even picking the overall winner of the tournaments. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets and don't forget to gamble responsibly. Okay, um, let's go through to the next uh, next group of games here. It is Chicago and Houston. The Bulls play Thursday and Saturday this week. The oh, Why does that say Milwaukee? That shouldn't say Milwaukee because it's not Milwaukee. It should be Houston. I made an error there. That is Houston's schedule. Both of these teams have the identical schedule. They play Thursday, Saturday, and then next week they go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, which are all of the um, higher volume days. So not that that's... You're going to be, you know, IO... Caruso, you're starting them on the days. Amen Thompson, you're starting him. But someone like if you're considering a Dylan Brooks or a Jock Landale, you would uh, probably not start them next week at all. Kobe White has been upgraded to questionable, so that's good news for the Bulls. Alex Caruso remains questionable with this ankle problem. Yeah, worry a little bit about where he sits, but for now, we're good. Julian Phillips is out. Cam Whitmore is out. So we are watching Caruso. He's been a little bit down of late. I don't think that he would be droppable, but... If he ends up missing time, then yes, because then you've got to assess next week too. Would you start Caruso on high volume days? Because if you wouldn't, if your team is that stacked and he's your 11th best guy, then you move on. Like there's no point holding a guy who's currently questionable that you wouldn't even start next week. Right? That's again, that's a very specific scenario, but you've got to look at your individual team. I mean, Tom, uh, sorry, Jalen Green has been killing it for Houston. Love what he's been doing at the moment. Let's hope that that can continue. They're getting a lot of shots, a lot of minutes. He's taking over a little bit from what was left over from Alperen Shingun. So we're watching to see how that's able to stick. In terms of guys getting boosted, Dusumu has been great the last two games. Kobe returning will have an impact. Still remains a rosterable guy. And then Amen Thompson clearly gets that boost there for Houston. His field goal percentage is absolutely through the roof. He's basically just taking layups and dunks. He's not doing anything else, but that's giving you great fantasy numbers, great boards, great scoring. He's been fantastic. And yeah, I, I, um, you know, I love him in Thompson and uh, where his uh, future lies. Utah and Dallas is the next game. The uh, Utah Jazz go Thursday, Saturday this week. And then they have the four high volume days next week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. The Mavericks last game is Thursday. This is it. Only last game for the week. And then next week, they go Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Sunday. So they've actually got the one quality game next week better than a lot of other teams. Larry Markkinen is out for Wednesday. So is it just because it's a back-to-back or is it you know, way too sore again? I'll say that he's questionable, Larry, for Thursday. Jordan Clarkson, I'm going to put as doubtful. John Collins is in for Wednesday. He wasn't when I did this. So I had him as questionable for Thursday. I think he's fine to play on Thursday. But the other part of it is, Last time the Jazz had a back-to-back, Chris Dunn rested one of them and John Collins rested one of them. So we'll see what they do. Josh Green's going to be out for Dallas. Dan Gafford's a guy we want to watch for Dallas. Will they ever push him back to 28 or is he always going to be 23-24? Because then that question remains, is Gafford a hold through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then high volume Monday next week, although he would start on a high volume Monday? He probably is a hold, but that's going to depend on your matchup. Could you use that roster spot Get three games using two ads to end this week. Because there's no point having Gafford if you're not playing the week after. And all those other fringe guys, we move on. Uh, Taylor Hendricks with Larry Markkinen. Um, well, if Larry Markkinen is out, Hendricks gets the boost. We might have Collins out. Who knows? But Hendricks is going to be getting a relatively solid role all the way through here. And then with Josh Green out, we saw Dante Exum play a lot more last game. He was pretty good. I don't really trust all of that from Exum. But he is at least getting that short-term boost. The Knicks and the Nuggets... Both of these teams play Thursday and Saturday this week. And both of these teams go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday next week. High volume days only. Randall is out. I'm going to assume that OG Ananobi is out. He's got the elbow irritation. They sent him back for an MRI. They said initially he was doubtful. I just don't think he's going to play this week at all, OG. Mitchell Robinson is returning to practice. He might return at some point towards the middle or end of next week. I wouldn't rush to add him. Bad schedule. Wouldn't start him anyway. And then Zeke Naji missed the last game for Denver. He's questionable. What we want to see for the Knicks in this one, it's key, is pressure to Chua. Because Achua could get wiped out completely by Robinson. But if... You know, he could actually just be wiped out anyway. But we want to see what they do, like with OG out. 
is it permanent Juice McBride? Or does Precious get back and start against a Denver team to match up on Aaron Gordon or Michael Porter? That's what we want to watch. Aaron Gordon has been really an interesting fantasy guy all season. He has some good moments and bad moments. Never seems to elevate gigantically. And yeah, there's not a lot to watch for Denver fantasy-wise, so that's why I've put him there. Juice McBride could get boosted for New York. It could also be Precious Achua. I just don't know what way they go. If they go McBride in this one, then Precious is done. Because this is like the situation where you would use Precious. But if Precious does not start this game against Denver, he is done and you drop him, I think. Uh, Peyton Watson is the guy that's getting that little bit of a boost for Denver, especially if Zeke Nagy is out. He gets some of those backup center minutes. The Atlanta Hawks and the Phoenix Suns is the final game of the day for Thursday. Atlanta plays Thursday, Saturday. Then next week, it looks like it starts off as a bad schedule with Monday, Wednesday, but they play Thursday, Saturday next week as well. So not only do they have a midweek back-to-back, but two low-volume days. Whereas the Suns go Thursday, Saturday this week, and then they go only three games next week, and they're all high-volume days, and they end their week on Friday. That stinks. Jalen Johnson hurt his ankle last time Atlanta played. I think he'll be okay, but we don't know. Kobe Bufkin, could he be returning? Uh, and Trey Young is out. Josh Kogi, I don't think will play, and Damian Lee will be out. And Yekka Okongwu was really good in that first game back. I feel more comfortable if he got 25 minutes. I wouldn't rush to add, but like I said, good schedule next week compared to a lot of other teams, the Hawks. DeAndre Hunter keeps getting that boost with Bay out, and I imagine he keeps getting it whether he takes advantage of it. Remains to be seen. And then Eric Gordon gets somewhat of a boost for Phoenix, but honestly, I, I don't care about Eric Gordon or Royce O'Neal or Bowl or any of those sort of blokes. Phoenix is coming into this one um, on a back-to-back, as uh, many other teams are. Today's episode is also brought to you by Better Help. Sometimes you need that opportunity to get something off your chest. Are you frustrated with how your fantasy season has gone with random players copying serious injuries at this point? Well, there's not a lot you can do about it, but getting it off your chest can really be helpful. Venting that out to someone in a neutral position, like a therapist, someone unbiased in your life, it's 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 useful. Like It teaches you coping skills, not sweating the small stuff, so to speak, but coping skills, getting stuff out. And yeah, We've got all bigger problems to deal with than things in fantasy and things in sport. Small things shouldn't be always just marginalized. Talk about them. Get it out. And that's where you can use therapy. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. So visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on NBA. So let's try and navigate this schedule now. There's only one team that goes Thursday, Friday, back-to-back. It is the Pelicans. We've been talking about the Pelicans' schedule for a while here. There's only one team that has three games in four nights to end this week. It's the Pelicans. There are three teams that have one game in the final four nights of the week. Charlotte, Dallas, who's that game is on Thursday. They're easy drops after that. Well, not Luca and Kyrie aren't, but you know what I mean. Uh, And Memphis. So, like, and Memphis, hmm. Memphis's game on Friday is against the Spurs, and we know what their pattern has been. So does Jaron or Des Bain play in that one? I don't know. Are we going to see my man Malzinha Pereira play? I think that could be an absolute disaster game, honestly. So watch your fringy Grizzly guys. But LaRavia and GG, they might actually play big minutes. Old mate, Dejon Giroud might be in there as well. That could get real ugly. The This is where it gets hard because next week, we are talking just insanely high volume days. So I'm going to look at this more from a quality game perspective. Over the next six days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, the Pelicans play four quality games in that time. There are 21 teams who have two quality games in that time and the Charlotte Hornets and the Memphis Grizzlies have one. So when you're debating, what do I do with Brandon Miller, Nick Richards, Vasily Misic, Trey Mann? Would you start those guys on those high volume days? Because if you wouldn't, well, then one game in six nights is an absolute L. What about like Des Bain? What if the Grizzlies don't play those guys on Friday? That means that they have zero quality games in the next six nights. Now, Bain and Jackson would be startable on the other games they play, but your fringe guys, like when do you use them? Once? It becomes really hard. And that's what you're going to see all the way through here. In the next eight days, there's 
one team that has five quality games in the next eight days, and it's the Pelicans. The Hornets and the Grizzlies have one quality game in the next eight days. So again, Brandon Miller's not a top 100 player. That's not worth holding. Nick Richards isn't. Trey Mann isn't. Misic sort of is, but there are 19 teams who have two quality games in eight days. Dreadful. What about if we stretch it out to 10 days? Well, it's the Pelicans again. Six quality games in 10 days. That's fantastic. And you know what? Charlotte has won. One in the next 10 days. So your fringe Hornets, Grant Williams, Misic, Richards, Mann, Miller, maybe Bridges. Now, again, some of them you might start on the higher volume days, but that is dreadful. One quality game, 10 days. You plus five them. Nick Richards switching for Larry Nance is a massive W. Honestly, like Trey Mann for Jose Alvarado, whether you would start Trey Mann or not, that's up, I don't know, but you might get five extra games over a 10-day period of usability, which is key. Let's go back to Thursday and look at some Yahoo points. Again, that's a really weird schedule to try and pass out the way things run the next couple of weeks because I could look at total volume and there's some validity to that because some of the guys that you do add that become streamers then turn into top 70 players for that short period of time and you would start them. But trying to figure that out every single day, seven days in advance is really, really hard. Corey Kispert is a good Yahoo points guy and so is Justin Champagne with some absences and potential absences of Avdir and Kuzma as well. Jalen Suggs. I know Dylan Brooks sugged last... Sugged? Well, okay. He sucked last game. Dylan Brooks, but the opportunity still remains. DeAndre Hunter and Taylor Hendricks. I, I think Markkinen could play in that game, but I think Hendricks is still looking okay as a lowly rostered player who should be able to give you some points league stream ability. For ESPN points league, similar names there again. Kispert, Justin Champagne, Suggs, Keon Ellis, who does uh, score much better in ESPN points formats. Dylan Brooks and the Pencil Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. And then we look at category leagues. Who can we stream in for the points category on Thursday? Kispert and Hunter look to me to be some better options there. Kispert's still widely available. But again, so many weird names are going to pop up. Shout out to Stanley Amude. Three-pointers, Leaky Beasley and Corey Kispert. Relatively available as well. For big man stats, rebounds, well, there's one guy we look at. It's the big avocado, Andre Drummond. And then Taylor Hendricks is uh, another rebound option. For blocks, John Isaac and Derek Lively. We know blocks are a variable stat, but these guys are in pretty good position to, to help you out there. For guard stats and assists, I do look at Jalen Suggs. And it's tough, but if the Jazz want to lose, they will play Taylor and Horton Tucker. And I don't think Clarkson plays, and there might be a rest for Dunn coming as well. So Horton Tucker might be an assist guy. That's pretty dirty to put him out there, but you never know. The steals, Keon Ellis is the very clear option there. And then Jalen Suggs, another good steals guy. Looking at percentages, for field goal percentage, Derek Lively seems to be the best guy uh, we've got. And then Daron Sharp with that real possibility that Nick Claxon's out. And then free throws, it is DeAndre Hunter and Justin. That's the Wizards. Justin Champagne, who could be playing big minutes again. But a lot of questionable tags, leaving a lot of stuff up in the air, unfortunately for us. And that brings me to the end of the streaming show. So go ahead and hit the old thumbs up, hit the like, hit the subscribe on YouTube, give it a five star on the audio side. And of course, go ahead and double bang it. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.